Da Jia Hao, that's Chinese for hello everyone, just a little FYI. Today I'm going to show you how to create a GIF. Or is it a GIF? Honestly, I'm not sure, but I prefer GIF. It's one of those tomato-tomato situations, right? Say it however you like, at least until that wise-ass Susan from accounts pipes up with, actually it's pronounced GIF. And that's when you hit her with a whoa, 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 which by the way is English for stop a horse. No one cares, Susan. No one cares. Anyway, let's crack on with the tutorial, shall we? First things first, we're going to open up After Effects. I'm assuming you animate in After Effects, so for the sake of this tutorial, I've already gone ahead and created an animation. Now, you can create a GIF directly in After Effects, but I've only done it a few times, and honestly, it's not my preferred method. Usually, you'd create a GIF for a few reasons, like hosting your animation on a website, Websites often have size limitations for animations, and GIFs are great because they're small and can loop seamlessly. There are modern tools like Lottie that can convert your animation into optimized HTML files for the web. But if you want to go old school, like me, I'll show you my preferred way. So, you've got your animation in After Effects, you're happy with it, and you're ready to render. First, reduce the size of your animation to 1080 by 1080. This will make things easier in the next step. Or, if needed, crop the animation to keep only the important parts. Finally, render your animation as an H.264 file and save it. Now, on to the next step. Okay, open up Photoshop. Stay with me, I know what you're thinking. Photoshop for animations? Yeah, turns out Photoshop can handle video files. Who would have thought, huh? Just go to File Open, bring in your animation, and you'll see a timeline appear below with your footage. This is where we start creating the GIF. Now the whole point of a GIF is to reduce its size. Fun fact, GIF stands for Graphics Interchange Format. So yeah, Susan, it's GIF, not GIF. Back off. First, let's shrink the canvas size. Go to Image, Image Size, change the dropdown to Percent, and drop it from 100% to 50%. Easy. Next, let's cut down the frame rate. You could do this in After Effects, but I find it easier in Photoshop. Just go to the Timeline panel, click the three-line menu in the corner, and select Set Timeline Frame Limit. I usually go with 10 frames per second, but do what works for you. And that's it. Let's move on. All right, so we've reduced the size and adjusted the frame rate, but how do we actually save it as a GIF for the web? Well, I'm going to show you. This part's a bit of a finger workout, but here's how you do it. Just go to File Export, Save for Web, Legacy. No idea why legacy is in brackets, but hey, it must be important. Or, if you're feeling fancy, you can use the shortcut. Alt plus Control plus Shift plus S, then hit Enter. Same result. Once the Save for Web window pops up, you'll see four preview options at the top. Original, Optimized, 2-Up, and 4-Up. Click on 4-Up, and you'll get four different versions of your GIF, each with different optimization settings. The top left image is always the original, while the other three are optimized versions. Pay close attention to the bottom left corner of each preview. That's your file size. Depending on your project, you'll probably need to get this number as low as possible without wrecking the quality. This takes a bit of fine tuning, so take your time adjusting different settings. On the right hand panel, you'll see a bunch of settings. Make sure the file type is set to GIF. If it's not, just switch it in the drop down. If your animation has a lot of colors, don't drop below 64 colors. If it's a simpler animation with only a few colors, don't go below 16. Or sometimes the preview screen just goes black and you can't see what you're working on. If your animation has a transparent background, keep transparency enabled. Otherwise, you might get an annoying white outline when the GIF is placed on a colored background. If that happens, I'd actually recommend using a Lottie file instead. But that's a tutorial for another day. At the bottom, you can resize your animation even further by reducing it to 50% or manually adjusting the dimensions. Play around with these settings to see what works best for your project. Before you hit save, make sure your GIF loops. At the bottom of the panel, there's a Looping Options drop-down. Set that to forever and your GIF will loop endlessly. Once you're happy with everything, hit save and that's it. You've got yourself a GIF and now, you can finally tell Susan from accounts to go away because it's pronounced GIF, not JIF. Hope this was helpful. 
Let me know if you found it useful and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and leave a comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you like this content, you might also enjoy some of the other videos on my channel, so be sure to check them out. Also, if any of the tutorials or products I've featured caught your eye, you can grab them directly from my Gumroad store. And if you'd like to support the channel and get some cool perks, consider becoming a patron. Patrons get a special mention at the end of every video, plus access to all my products and files for free. I post videos every Friday, so stay tuned for more. Also, this video isn't sponsored by Skillshare, but if you click on the referral link below, you can get free access for a month. Explore any course you like and cancel any time before the month ends, no cost at all. Thanks again for your support and I'll see you in the next video.